All right, I want to do a quick video on uh, gearing and gear meshing. And so I guess we'll just start with the basics here. This top right here, this is your spur gear, okay? This bottom one, this is your pinion gear. As you can see, this is loose. I loosened it up so I could do it on. I loosened it up so you guys could see it and I could do it right now. Now, here's another way to do it here, better view. Spur gear, okay? Pinion gear, you can see that this is a, uh, what's this one, a 20 tooth. So, the first thing that you want to do is you want to do your spur gear first. This you can probably, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, here's the uh, 84, so this is 84 tooth uh, spur gear. So the first thing you want to do is figure out your spur gear. So what I did, which all team associated vehicles come with a manual. And on the manual, you can probably see right here, it says the size of the turn of the motor, and then it tells you what pinion to run and what spur to run and what your final drive ratio will be. So this is where I started out, because I run 17.5, obviously, so I started out with 78 spur. Now, I don't have a 27 pinion in here, like it says. This is my, uh, this is my SC5M booklet and this is my T5M we're working on. They're pretty close. I have a 28 tooth pinion and a 78 spur in here in this T5M. But this is, so that's where I start with my spur. I don't do my pinion there, but I start my spur there. I usually start my pinion there and then adjust from there. So, so let's say you figure out your spur, you get your spur in there and it says to start with a 27 or 28 pinion. So I'd put that in there, I'd run it. Now, how I do it is I run this, I have five minute mains and uh, five minute qualifiers. So I run it for like, what I'll do is when I put a new pinion in here, I'll go up to give it a little bit more, to give it a little more speed, a little more torque. I'll go up with my pinion and I'll run it for about two and a half minutes and then I'll stop. And this is a Duratrax temp gun and I'll put it on the motor to make sure because the one thing with adjusting your pinion is that you can overheat your motor really quick. So I'll keep my I'll keep my motor under 100. I'll, I like to run it about 150, 155 degrees. I'll keep it about right there because that's cool enough. They say once you get up to like 180, above 165, you start damaging the magnets inside the motor. So what I'll do is I'll put this on there. I'll run it for my five minutes. I'll check the heat. If the heat is too high, I'll go down obviously to let the engine run cooler. If the the if it's does if it's like 120, 130, way lower. I'll go higher on my pinion to give me more juice and maybe a little, a little higher. So that's kind of how I do my gearing. Different, you know, if you're running a six minute or an eight minute main, you might have to go a little less with your pinion and change it there. But that's what I do. I find the spur and I start at the spur and I leave the spur like what it says. Like I said, it's run 78 tooth on a 17.5 turn. So I run a 78 tooth and then I find adjust it with my pinion and go up and down from there and keep the temperature, like I said, um, a little bit lower than 160, like 150, what I like to around 155. And like I said, this is how you do that. Because if you just, if you just up this pinion way higher and you don't, and you go out there and you run it, you could overheat your motor really quick and ruin the magnets in it. And then it won't, it won't function right. I mean, I've actually smelled the guy. There was a guy one time come off the track. I could smell his motor burden when he pulled his truck off the truck. He did really well. Um, I think he beat me. I think he did. I don't remember. But anyway, the point is, I mean, he, I think his motor, I don't know if his motor was fried or not. I didn't really talk to him after that. Uh, that was the end. It was the A main. So we were over for the night, but I could smell it when he pulled it off the track. I could smell the motor burden. Anyway. So, so that's pretty much the thing. Get your spur first, fine tune with your pinion. Okay. Now let's do gear mesh. Um, gear mesh. What I do is I take little sheets of paper like this. Uh, what I'll do is I'll slide this back and you've probably heard about this online. And I'll slide this in there between them. Gotta go like that. Push it in there to where it's tight. And then once I get it in there real tight, we'll use it. It's kind of hard to do it to where you guys can see, but so I'll pull it tight, keep it tight, and then I will tighten down my motor nuts, bolts, <laughs> like that one. Make sure it stays tight. Boom. 
And then how I know it's in there good is when I pull this out, it shouldn't rip, it should pull right out. And see, and it'll still, like if I hold this still, it'll still move a little bit. See it moving a little bit right there? That way you know it's not too tight, because if it's too tight, it can, you can lose power. And if it's too loose, you can lose power. So you want it just perfect. So that's what I do. I just use a little sheet of paper, cut it real small, stick it in there, push it tight, tighten it down. Simple, easy way to gear mesh. Um, whenever I was talking earlier about reducing rotational mass, you know, they have pinions that are steel. Like that's what I ran originally were steel, but they also, so you want to use like aluminum. Well, this is a good way to reduce your rotating mass as well. This is your top drive that I showed you guys earlier, which your slippers on right here. Um, this one has holes in it. You can see this spur gear has holes in it, but they have ones that have bigger holes cut in them. So like you could reduce your rotating mass with that and this as well, which is what I do as well. Um, yeah, but that's just kind of a quick little overview. Like I said, get your spur down and then from your spur you can fine tune with your pinion up, down, and I do it upon the amount of time. Um, yeah. Oh, and something else I was wanting to show you guys. Oh, where is it? Here it is. This, this battery is a four millimeter bullet plugs. If you see here, if you notice my battery, I have these bullet plugs right here soldered right to my ESC wires. Now the reason that I do that is so I don't have to use this. This weighs 20 grams alone, just this. And I've reduced all of that by just putting bullet plugs on the end here. So it goes directly from my ESC, pushes right into my bullet plugs right here. And that saves me 20 grams of weight just right there. That easy. I mean, that was a simple little thing that I did. That, that And I do that with, this is my T5M, and I've done it with my SC5M as well. So, but uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can, I'm missing here. I'm sure there is. I miss all kinds of stuff in my videos. But, but yeah, that's, that's just a quick little how to gear mesh and how I do my gearing. Like when you start messing with gearing, it's important that you have this so you don't fry your engine, your engine, your electric motor. But uh, yeah, that's and that allows you to fine tune your pinion, like I said. And I keep my pinion to where my cars run cool enough, but they run at the higher end of them. And really, what you really need to do, honestly, and I don't have a motor analyzer yet, but you need to set your, here's your timing and stuff on your motor. You need to use a motor analyzer and set up your motor correctly. That way you can sh get the sensors close, shim it correctly, all that. I don't have a motor analyzer yet. I will have one. And when I get one, I'll start, uh, I'll go through all my motors and my RCs and I'll, I'll shim them to have the sensors aligned correctly so that I can get the most power, the most kilovol kilovolts, uh, which is pretty much like rotations per minute, RPMs, get the most power I can out of each one of my motors. Um, and I'll do that. I'll do a video on that when I finally get that motor analyzer. It's just pretty expensive. It's, you know, well over a bill. So, yeah, a little quick video. Gear meshing, like I said, start with your spur. Get your spur right, which I would go off what your book says or whatever it says for that size of motor or ask people around in your track. You got to be careful when you take advice from people track. Some guys are really good. And then there's guys like the one guy I told you at my track where I could smell his motor burning when he took it off the thing. So you got to be careful what kind of advice you take from people because you could take the wrong advice put the wrong size spur. Cause these spurs go different. Like I think it goes 78, 84. That's a huge difference uh, in teeth. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps guys and just kind of give you a little idea about gear meshing and gearing. Um, and I may have to readjust this as well. This gearing is what I had on it originally when I was running a, a four gear transmission. And like, I don't, you can see on this now, like this is an easy way to tell, this has three gears, like one, two, three gears. The ball diff, idler gear, top shaft. So this has three gears. And I had a four gear in here, and I built this three gear and put it in here. And that's the shell racing, it like has vents and stuff. Shell racing uh, motor plates, pretty nice, pretty light too. You can see the holes in it right here, kind of help it breathe a little bit. But So I'll have, probably have to change this gearing as well. And oh, oh, something I was wanting to say, Trinity, has aluminum pinions that like you see this one how big it is and all the space like right here in between right here in between these two points right here like all this metal right here trinity if you go online like if you go aiming hobbies or rc superstore by the way if you're gonna buy smaller things you need to buy them from rc superstore they're cheaper and uh their shipping is like really fast but the only problem with rc superstore is a lot of stuff they don't have in stock so you may have to go to A-Main. A-Main stuff costs more and it takes longer to get to you. But anyway, back on point. The pinion that Trinity offers has holes drilled all through it. 
to make it even lighter. So not only is it aluminum, see this one's aluminum. This one's aluminum as well. I have a steel one in there. I think it's a 21 tooth and it is, I mean, it feels like a rock in your hand. It's heavy. Um, but yeah, Trinity has aluminum ones that not only are aluminum like this, but they also have holes drilled all through them to make them even lighter to reduce your rotating mass even more. So that's something if you guys are looking to buy pinion gears, I would get a Trinity, go online and, and, and get Trinity and buy, a, I think it's $10 for each one. Um, they're ten dollars nine ninety nine from Amy and Hobbies and nine dollars and sixty nine cents from RC Superstore, but they're worth it, you know, re reduce your rotating mass. So, yeah, just a quick video. Hope that helps some people. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, guys, and I'll uh, let your friends know. This will probably help them, you know, with a bunch of basic stuff. Thanks.